I need that's... better evidence than just we don't know what it is. Therefore, it's alien with the crowdsourcing of eyes on Earth uh, tells me that is less convincing than ever before. Correct. Do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. I know the exact locations. We're talking bright objects shooting from Earth, strange lights near the ISS, and the ever-controversial Black Knight satellite, an ancient space object sending signals for 13,000 years. Dive into the debates over NASA's changing stance on unexplained sightings, the thrilling tales of astronauts seeing inexplicable things, and the government's secretive UFO programs. It's a mix of hard science, wild speculation, and the eternal question of whether we're alone in the universe. Since ancient times, people have gazed at the stars, full of wonder and dreams. Early cave drawings prove that even our early ancestors were drawn to the stars at night, this fascination led to incredible discoveries. One amazing achievement is the International Space Station, ISS, a space home where people from many countries work as one. Built in space, close to Earth, mainly by the USA and Russia, with help and parts from many nations, the ISS is a high point in space exploration. It was first called Freedom in the 1980s, by U.S. President Ronald Reagan, and later changed in the 1990s to include global teamwork, giving it its present form. It took a decade and over 30 missions to build the ISS, showing a level of science and engineering teamwork never seen before. Involving five space agencies from 15 countries, it stands as a sign of our combined strength. The ISS isn't just for living in space, it's also a lab. Early research by ISS astronauts was on long-term life and material studies in zero gravity. It has a special lab called Destiny, among other parts, for experiments only possible in space. Here, scientists explore the unknown and exciting mysteries of space. For example, the ISS is key in watching Earth and space, with cameras and capturing things like strange objects and bright flashes leaving Earth. These views offer special chances to learn and discover new things. Cameras on the ISS often spot odd objects. Recently, they saw a bright object shooting from Earth, an unusual event, as most things seen are distant. This was close, offering a rare glimpse of something unknown leaving our planet. These sightings raise many questions. Often, unknown objects near the ISS cause a lot of interest and guesses among scientists and people alike. These events make people wonder about what these objects are, where they come from, and their purpose. What are these objects? Where do they come from? What do they want? Some think these objects might be curious about the ISS. People say that if you watch long enough, you might see weird lights or movements near the ISS, leading to ideas about aliens being interested in our space activities. If you look closely, you might notice odd lights approaching the station. Interestingly, the live ISS feed often shuts off when these objects show up, but this time, it happens so fast, most missed it. This particular object caused a lot of attention. People debated what it was, with some thinking it moved very fast, only because it was in one photo. It was bigger than usual space junk or far-off space objects, leading to more talk and guesses about where it came from. There was a lot of disagreement about it. Some thought it was super speedy since it appeared in just one shot. It looked big, too, unlike the small, blurry things usually seen near the ISS. It seemed to be a large object coming from Earth, not a rocket, but then what was it? NASA, the space agency, often dismisses these as space debris or optical illusions. Yet, there's a change in how NASA views these unexplained sites with its leader, Bill Nelson, pushing for more openness and detailed investigations into these occurrences. But now, even they are reconsidering. If you ask me, do I believe there's life in a universe that is so vast that it's hard for me to comprehend how big it is? My personal answer is yes. NASA's head, Bill Nelson, 
is calling for more transparency about these mysteries. He's encouraging scientists to dig deeper to find out what's really happening. Although NASA hasn't found any proof of aliens, they haven't stopped looking. NASA is really into studying life in space. They have projects that explore how life started and if there's life out there in the universe. This shows how dedicated they are to solving some of the biggest mysteries about space. They've set up a program specifically to learn about life in space, like how it began and if it exists beyond our planet. For a long time, astronauts and people watching from Earth have seen weird things around the ISS. These include unusual lights and objects that don't resemble anything familiar. Once, Russian cosmonaut Ivan Wagner, while on the ISS, recorded what looked like UFOs. The video showed lights moving in a line and some thought they might be from outer space. There was this one time when the ISS live feed caught a bright object moving in space. NASA said it was space junk or just a tiny meteor, but it really got people thinking. While some UFOs can be explained as space debris or reflections, there are some that remain unexplained. NASA's team that looks into UFO sightings often struggles because the videos are low quality or the cameras aren't good enough for this kind of thing. Sometimes, the weird stuff in the footage is just a camera glitch, a tricky angle or strange lighting. These mysteries keep us wondering and dreaming about what or who might be out there. Space agencies and UFO experts are teaming up to find answers. They're using advanced equipment on the ISS to study these objects. Their aim is to figure out which sightings are just normal space things and which ones are still a mystery. They want to use both space-based and Earth-based observations to get a clearer understanding of these strange sightings. They're hoping to separate the ordinary space stuff from the unexplained mysteries. Some experts think we should match what the ISS sees with data on stars, planets, and space weather. This might help figure out if these sightings are just odd natural occurrences or something more incredible. But this method has its own problems. Like needing better technology for watching space and the risk of getting things wrong. In 1957, the Soviet Union sent Sputnik 1 into orbit, the first human-made object to circle Earth. But there are stories of something else. For more than 100 years, something called the Black Knight Satellite has been puzzling people all over the world with its orbit around Earth. However, many of these stories have been proven wrong or don't have much evidence. One debunked story involved ISS footage showing mysterious lights, which were thought to be UFOs. Later, it turned out these lights were made from squid fishing boats using bright lights to catch squid, showing how easy it is to mistake something from Earth for something from space. The mysterious object, the Black Knight satellite, has really captured people's imaginations. It's rumored to have been sending signals for an incredible 13,000 years, way before any technology we know of. But a lot of the Black Knight story seems to be a mix of different events and misunderstandings. For instance, in 1960, the US Navy found a dark object in orbit. They thought it was a Soviet spy satellite, but it turned out to be a piece of a US Air Force satellite. If this is true, it's really intriguing and makes us wonder about its origins and purpose. The tale gets even more weird with Nikola Tesla, the famous inventor. Back in 1899, while working in his lab in Colorado Springs, Tesla came across an odd signal. He thought these signals, seeming like purposeful number transmissions, came from outer space. Tesla guessed they might be messages from another planet, hinting at an early brush with the Black Knight. But fans of the Black Knight theory believe these signals were aliens' first try at contacting us through a satellite in space. Tesla considered these could be messages from another world, possibly an encounter with the Black Knight. After Tesla, other big names like Guillermo Marconi and Jorgen Hals also picked up strange signals. Known as long-delayed echoes, LDEs, these signals confuse scientists because they didn't act like normal radio waves. In 1973, sci-fi author Duncan Lunin thought these LDEs might be from a 13,000-year-old alien device orbiting near the moon, maybe from the star system Epsilon Bootis. But Lunin later took back his ideas, admitting mistakes and the unscientific nature of his methods. 
the echoes were weird, showing up to 15 seconds after the first signal, and their source remained a mystery. The Black Knight conspiracy got more attention with a 1954 New York Times article about two natural satellites orbiting Earth, which was later denied by project heads. Also, a 1998 photo from the STS-88 mission, thought to show the Black Knight satellite, was actually a thermal blanket lost during an EVA, a space journalist James Oberg explained. Despite experts debunking these theories, the legend of the Black Knight satellite still captivates many. The mix of real scientific puzzles, historical misunderstandings, and the charm of alien life keeps stirring curiosity and guesses about this mysterious space object. In 1954, Major Donald Kehoe, known for his work in aeronautical circles and as a UFO researcher, made a shocking claim. He said the US government had spotted one or two artificial satellites orbiting Earth, way before the Soviet Union launched Sputnik. This claim, with no clear explanation from the Pentagon, led to widespread rumors and conspiracy theories about an unknown satellite, raising fears of a spy satellite or alien surveillance. The story got thicker when, in 1960, the New York Times reported an unidentified silent satellite in polar orbit, something beyond U.S. or Soviet capabilities then. Astronomers worldwide confirmed seeing this strange satellite. However, its irregular appearances and odd orbit didn't match any existing technology. During the Cold War, this sparked fear of a foreign spy satellite. But this story often merged with the Black Knight satellite legend, a supposed alien spacecraft believed by some to have orbited Earth since ancient times. This story grew with tales of weird radio signals and unidentified objects in space. Adding to the intrigue, several astronauts, like Gordon Cooper, reported odd sightings in space. Cooper, a well-respected astronaut, claimed to see a green glowing object during his Mercury 9 mission. Officially, this was blamed on a malfunction, but Cooper's sighting lent weight to the Black Knight's existence. However, Cooper denied these claims, though some think he was pressured to keep quiet. Ideas about the Black Knight range from it being a spy device from outer space to an artifact from a long gone, sophisticated society. Some think it might be a storehouse of wisdom, perhaps holding DNA or important details about our history. Even though these ideas and claims are intriguing, many scientists and experts think these are just misunderstandings, illusions, or mix-up of space junk and radio waves. For instance, NASA's 1998 photo showing a weird thing in orbit, linked with the Black Knight satellite, was actually a thermal blanket lost from the space shuttle Endeavour. In 1973, Duncan Lunan, a Scottish researcher, boldly said he decoded a message from what's believed to be the Black Knight satellite, coming from the Epsilon Buddhist star system. He based this on his study of long-delayed echoes, first noticed in the 1920s. He thought these LDEs were deliberate messages from aliens. In an article named Space Probe from Epsilon Buddhist, he saw these echoes as a map to the Epsilon Buddhist system, instructions from aliens. This added an exciting yet controversial aspect to the Black Knight story. Despite these captivating stories, the truth about the Black Knight satellite remains a mystery. Lunin's ideas were later questioned, and he admitted some old records he used weren't right. He withdrew his message translation in 1976, but this didn't lessen the interest in the Black Knight satellite, which remains a topic of speculation and conspiracy theories. The Black Knight satellite's uncertain nature keeps people guessing. Is it a natural thing we don't understand? A secret project? or something from another world. Many theories have been proposed, like an alien monitoring device or a relic from an old advanced society. Some think it might hold key info about our past. However, these theories often mix events from different times, like Tesla's 1899 radio messages and a 1954 newspaper report about two natural satellites around Earth. Stories of sightings and government secrets add to these theories but they're still just guesses without solid proof. Duncan Lunan's deep involvement in astronomy and science, like his work at the Airdrie Public Observatory and with the Astronomers of the Future Club, shows his commitment to scientific exploration. 
Even though he took back his Ypsilon Buddhist idea, his work in astronomy and science fiction keeps influencing talks about alien life and space communication. The recent rise in UFO reports, now over 510 since March 2021, tells a fascinating and mysterious story. The US government recorded more than 350 new cases in this period, a number that's both interesting and puzzling. While many were explained as common things like balloons or birds, about 171 are still unexplained, showing strange flight patterns or advanced features. These puzzling cases have caught the attention of specialized groups like the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, AARO, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, ODNI, who are looking into them more. Diving deeper into the history, the government has been trying to make sense of all this UFO stuff by putting these sightings into five different groups. Things floating in the air like balloons, stuff happening in the sky naturally, secret pro made people less likely to report seeing something strange, so some real UFOs might have been missed. The Department of Defense created a group called AARO, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, ODNI, is also involved. They're working together not just to figure out what these UFOs are, but also to keep the country safe. They're trying to be more open and share information with the public when they can, to build trust and stop people from making wild guesses about these strange sightings. Now, in the hallowed halls of Congress, something pretty jaw-dropping happened. There was this Air Force major named David Grush, right? He used to be a big deal in intelligence. Now, he had this incredible story to tell about a super-secret U.S. program. Get this. It was all about getting hold of UFOs from outer space and trying to figure out how they work. Yep, you heard that right. Alien UFOs. So, Major Grush gets up there and spills the beans. He says there's this major cover-up happening in the government. It's like a maze of secrets. They're keeping this UFO stuff away from the big bosses in Congress. Can you believe that? He learned about this wild program that's been going on for decades, trying to snatch up these crashed UFOs and crack their secrets. And guess what? They didn't let him in on it. But wait, it gets crazier. Grush talks about meeting some top dogs who dropped hints about these UFOs coming from, like, not Earth. And they didn't just find metal and stuff, they found biologics. Biologics came with some of these recoveries. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to. That science speak for something living, or once living. So now we're talking about possible alien life. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. Now, let's flip the coin. Over at the Pentagon, there's this guy, Sean Kirkpatrick. He's the head honcho of this department called All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. Fancy, right? He's been saying, nope, no aliens here every time someone asks about UFOs. Kirkpatrick is like, we don't have any proof of a program that's messing with alien tech. So you've got Grush with his mind-blowing story on one side and Kirkpatrick totally denying it on the other. Talk about a clash of titans. Meanwhile, Congress is suddenly all ears about UFOs. It's like they've just discovered a new favorite mystery novel. They're shifting gears, showing more and more interest in these unidentified flying thingamajigs. People used to keep mum about seeing UFOs, but not anymore. The public's going nuts over the idea of aliens visiting us, and the lawmakers? They're taking Major Gush's story super seriously. They're even a bit worried about his safety after he let the cat out of the bag. The stories from Grush and others are like throwing gasoline on the public's curiosity. Everyone's buzzing about what's really going on with UFOs and aliens. They're shouting for the government to stop playing hide-and-seek and come clean. It's a whole new world of intrigue, secrets, and maybe, just maybe, visitors from another world. Now, we've got Joshua Simeter from NASA's team that's studying UFOs, and Adam Frank, a professor who knows a ton about astrophysics. These guys are saying, hold up, we need solid proof. They're all about hard evidence, and let's be real. When it comes to stories about visitors from outer space, the evidence has been pretty thin on the ground. It's like searching for a needle in a haystack, but the needle might not even exist. Then there's Avi Loeb, a big shot astronomer. He's looking up at the stars and saying, I don't see any alien spaceships. 
He's pretty doubtful about the idea of all these alien crafts zooming around without anyone getting a clear picture or snagging a piece of spaceship. Now, let's put this whole UFO drama in context. The US has a history of people, especially those with government jobs, claiming they've got the inside scoop on UFOs. This kind of story goes way back to the 1940s and 1950s when everyone was buzzing about flying saucers. There were these authors, Donald Kehoe and Frank Scully, who kind of set the stage for the whole I'm revealing secret alien stuff vibe. But like the UFO storytellers before them, folks like Grush today are facing the same tough crowd. Prove it or it's just another tale. Some other credible people have also stepped up with their UFO stories. Take retired Navy pilots David Fravor and Ryan Graves. They've seen some weird stuff in the sky while flying their military jets, and they've even talked to Congress about it. Their stories add more layers to this whole UFO mystery. We're talking about national security, scientific discovery, and just trying to figure out what's really up there. So, what do you think about all this? Are we alone in the universe? Or is there something more out there? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and hey, if you're digging these cosmic conundrums, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more out-of-this-world discussions.